Good afternoon. <coughs> Excuse me. And welcome. My name is Michelle Dutrissa and I'm an independent demonstrator here in New South Wales, Australia. Now, just want to let you know that if you want to catch up with what has been happening on my blog, you can hop on to butterfliesandbows.com, which you will find the address there above. And at the end of this video, um, I will put up a link to where you can purchase all the products that I've used today. Now, today I want to talk a little bit about where do you get your inspiration from. So I'm going to flip my camera down. <clears throat> and we're going to have a look, a very, very quick look. We're not going to go into any depth or detail in the latest catalogues. But I want you to think about where do you find your inspiration? So let me just move my camera back into view and let me flip it down so you can see my desk. Won't be one moment. And also, too, please jump on. And if you're new on here, please say hello and let me know where you're from. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have got a little bit of a foggy voice today. Oops, I'll help if I open my bottle. <clears throat> my hearing is a little bit out. I've had a very bad case of um, a head cold and uh, a little bit of COVID as well. So I'm sort of over all of that, which is really, really good. Um, but uh, did dampen down my Christmas holidays a little bit. And uh, it's left me with feeling my ears are blocked. So uh, I'm sort of like hearing myself in my head a bit funny. So anyway, let me just turn this camera down so you can see my desk. Okay, here we go. So as I said, where do we find our inspiration from? Now, of course, our catalogues is the first place that we can go to to find inspiration. Stamping Up have gone to a great deal of trouble in creating these beautiful catalogues for us, not only to see the products that they've got available, but also to see the design ideas that they've had for the use of some of these products. Um, and a lot of them are just stunning, especially in this new mini catalogue. Now, if you're here in Australia and you don't have a demonstrator and you don't have a catalogue, please send me a line to Michelle at jutrissa.com and I will organise to get some catalogues out to you as soon as I can. So this is probably a good first place of call to go looking for some really great ideas and of course we also have our celebration catalogue which goes until the 28th of February. So when you purchase something from our annual catalogue or our mini catalogue um, and you spend $90 or up to $180 that you can choose products within the Celebration Catalogue for free. So that's one place where we can find inspiration. Another place we can find inspiration, of course, is if we go into something like Pinterest. And we can flip through here through lots of ideas that have been posted by different demonstrators and people on um, different card folds like I've got here or different ideas and combinations of what you can put together. Another place that I often find um, inspiration is things around me, whether it be I'm walking through a shop and I see clothing, colours that they've put together in displays. Now, a good place for that is in the kids' wear because they usually use lots of bright colours, especially here in summer. I'm just let me pop my comments on so I can see if anyone is. Hi, Deborah, how are you? So <clears throat> kids' clothing is great because you get lots of inspiration for colour, lots of bright colours, lots of colour combinations that don't necessarily always think about. Um, and, you know, you might see something and you go, oh, wow, that's fantastic. What a great idea. But there's also things around us. Now, many years ago, and I don't know where the photo is now, but um, I had a packet of Nutri-Grain um, breakfast cereal. And on the back of that was a sportsman, and underneath was another three photos, smaller photos of that sportsman. And then on top of it was written all these questions about not so much Nutri-Grain, but about being sporty and what made you a sports person. So I found that as a really, really good way for inspiration I had a really great photo of my son swimming in the pool and then I had 
th other photos of him swimming at different stages. So I put them all together and formed a collage and printed it up and added the wording over the top. Now, as I said, I can't find that photo for the life of me at the moment. I know it is somewhere safe, but I still haven't quite got around to scrapbooking it as yet. But it was just that idea from a box of cereal. Um, and you'll find them in the most unusual places. This last couple of weeks or last couple of, last month or so, my inspiration has actually come from this box of tissues. And I saw this, my husband brought this home from the, the shopping centre. The mini catalogue had only just come out uh, to demonstrators, so I had seen it. And the first thing I thought of was, wow, dainty delight. Look at this. You've got these beautiful images. Now, this one here, which has actually got a very similar flower in it. And I thought, hey, I can make a card with this using this box as my inspiration. It's now empty, and I've been saying to my husband all week, don't throw it out because I need it. So today we're going to make a card using this tissue box as my inspiration. So let me pop that to one side. So what I've got, I've got my Dainty Delight stamp set here, and I'm going to use this particular image here. I could also have used this one here as well. Um, I wanted something that wasn't too big that it allowed me to stamp my images going in two directions. I don't want to go in all four directions. I just want to go in two directions. Or you could have it all going in one direction too. The colour I've chosen, okay, is my basic grey, which is getting very close to the colour of my tissue box. And, of course, I'm going to do my embossing and my matting in my basic white. So a very, very simple um, combination but can look very effective. Now, I've got members of my family who are going through a little bit of a rough time at the moment and I really want to send them a card just to let them know that I'm thinking of them. So I'm going to use Sending Support which is in the celebration catalogue as the um, sentiment for this card, just to let them know that I'm thinking of them and praying for them. So that's where all my inspiration has come from today. So let's get started. Now, this is not going to be a card that's going to take us a long time. It won't take long at all. I've also thrown in a little piece of vellum because we do have the dies at the moment that do cut out some of these images and plus a few extras that go with the Dainty Delight. And I thought that I might add a piece of vellum just in case I want to die cut a couple of images and pop them in there as well just to give it a little bit more dimension. I also have here somewhere, and I'm sure it's just close at hand, yep, is my pack of... Baker's Twine Essentials, and again, I've got the greys and the whites also in that. Mm, I must order some more of that uh, Baker's Twine as well. Okay, I've got another piece of basic white here to put my sentiment on. I've got one piece of basic white as my mat, and then I've got another piece to add inside where I can write my message to my family to let them know I'm thinking of them. So we're going to start with this piece of basic white at the moment. I'll pop all those pieces to side. Now I've cut this piece here at 9.7 by 14.1. Okay, can someone hit, let me know? You can hear me okay? I think you can. Um, if you can't, please let me know. Something has just come up to say my mic is muted, but I'm sure that's just on my tablet. Okay, so we're going to grab our embossing buddy and we're going to go over this area here with our embossing buddy, just nice and liberally so we can add um, our embossing on here because we're going to do all this stamping and then we're going to emboss it with white embossing powder. So I'm just going, tapping that all over, just making sure I've got plenty of coverage on there. 
squish my ears with crack. I've been deaf for a few days now. Oh, good. Thank you, Deborah, for letting me know. Okay, so we're going to use our Versamark, and that's the ink that we need, which is going to allow our um, embossing powder to cling onto it. Now, I'm going to stamp it this way because I do want to stamp some images going horizontal with my page. Okay. And I don't mind if I'm going to stamp a little bit off. So I'm just going to start by stamping one there. Now, I don't know how well you're going to see this, and I'm just taking this up and down a little bit just so then we've got some variation. And I'm just going to come in and fill that hole there. And I'm going to pop another one on there. Hoping I've got good ink on this and a little bit there. Now, of course, I could have cut this a little bit bigger and then um, trimmed it down to the size I want, but that's okay. I'm going to keep going with what I've got here. And then I'm going to pop that one in the center there. Have overlapped that a little bit. That's I'm not too worried about that. Pop another little bit there. Okay. So I might just put a few stems just there, and I'm quite happy with that. I'm a little bit light there in ink, but I'm not going to worry about trying to fix it. I think you might be getting the gist of that. Now, I'm just going to grab a piece of scrap paper here just to be able to catch my embossing powder. And I'm going to pop that underneath and sprinkle this embossing powder quite liberally over the top. Then just shake that off. And that is so far looking really good. Of course, I've got a little bits of powder here that I don't want. So let me just grab my brush here. I'm just going to pop a bit more on this here. A little bit of powder there. And just go around and just get all those little straggly pieces of bossing powder where I don't want it. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. So let's pop that to one side and we're going to pour all this back because we not, don't need to waste any of it. And pop that lid on. Whoops, I should have popped that lid on a bit better than that. I just covered myself in embossing powder. Oh, well. Okay, so let me just connect my heat gun. And this is going to make a little bit of noise. So let's bring this back in. Now, of course, we have our tweezers if we need them. I'm just going to pop it there just in case I need to hold that up a bit and let's emboss this. Now, of course, with the heat, the heat melts the embossing powder and it will go from a matte white 
to a shiny white once it's all done. And it's quite magical watching that turn. Just take your time and just let that heat gun do its work. You do want to make sure that when you've got a large area like this that you're getting everything. I'm just going to give the back of that just a little bit of a go because the heat from this can actually curve your cardstock a little. Now I think I've got that everywhere, so let's have a quick look. Yeah, that all looks great. Okay. Now, as I said, this is a fairly simple card. It's not, it's not a hard one. It's all basic measurements. So then I have got my mat here, which is just three millimetres biggest. My mat is 10 centimetres by 14.4. Now, let me just unplug that heat gun and plug in my phone again so we don't lose connectivity. Okay, so we're now we're going to adhere these two together. And so there should only be about one and a half mil all the way around. Okay, so I'm just going to just do a little bit of embossing powder on my desk here. So, oh, look, I've missed a little bit here. So I'm wondering whether if I bring that back in, I might have to, one little part that I didn't get embossed. Let's just see if we can fix that. Okay, we're going to have to bring out the, the gun again because I just missed that little bit. My finger wiped over the top of it, so that's how I noticed it. I topped up that container of embossing powder recently and I think I have overfilled it. So let me just pop my heat gun on again. And just get this top part where I missed. That's where you have to be a little bit careful and really pay attention to um, what you've embossed and what you haven't embossed to make sure that you get it all. Okay. That's all done now. Probably got a little bit of straggly embossing powder on there, but that's all right. I don't mind. Okay. So there we go. Okay, hi from Australia. All I've got is a Facebook user. I don't have a name. Um, for next time, just um, 
allow uh, permission or give permission to StreamYards to put your name up there it would be great, so, so I know who I'm talking to. But welcome. Thank you for joining us. So I've got my strip here for my sentiment. Now, that at the moment is around about three centimetres by 10 centimetres, and then this is the piece that's going to go on the inside of my card. So what I do want to do, I'm just going to grab my chamois here, which probably does need a little bit more water, but it's still damp enough that I can clean that. Let's move that ink out of the road. And I've got my basic, put my lid on that, my basic grey. And I'm going to stamp in basic grey the image that I've stamped on the front of my card. I'm going to stamp it here. And then I've chosen my sentiments. And the sentiments I've chosen from the sending support are some days are harder than others, sending love and thoughts and prayers. So I've got my two sentiments here, but I do want to put them onto a smaller block. So let me just clean this down. Just pop them on that block there so I could keep an eye on where they were. So let me just swap these over. I want this one here first. This is the one that's going to go on the inside. Got cords everywhere. Now let me just see if I can move that out of the road. Hope they're not in your way. Make sure I've got this turned around the right way. And all I want to do is probably pop that maybe around about there. You could pop it on the bottom, but I just want to be able to pop that there. Then I can actually sign it down the bottom. So that's the inside of my card. So let's just pop that inside the card so that we know that that's all done. So I'm just keeping it very simple because I do want to write a, a little message to this person. And that's going to go on the inside. Just there like that. Okay. Just going to grab my bone folder and just give this a nice firm crease. Now my um, card base was ten and a half centimeters by twenty nine point nine, and I've scored that at fourteen point nine centimeters. Now this piece here is for our sentiment, so I'm just going to clean off that one and swap that over for the sentiment that I want. Just going to see if I can line this up as straight as I possibly can. Now the grid paper works out really well for this. Bring my ink in again. Now this card is for a male, so that's why I'm sort of keeping it's a little bit of floral to it, but just keeping it down to um, just the basic grey. And I'm going to stamp that in the middle, but we may trim this down because I did make this probably a wider than I normally would want. So that's that part there. So that's all our stamping done. So I'm just going to grab my trimmer. Now, I do love to use my little guillotine for this. And it looks like I may have got this a little bit crooked. So I'm just going to line up. Now, what I tend to do is find um, portions of my guillotine that I can use to line it up. So I'm actually using the edge 
of this plastic uh, piece here, which is where you can hold, you put your work underneath it and that allows you to put your fingers on top and hold everything smoothly. And I use that as my guide. So at the moment what I'm trying to do is I'm using that line there to line it up with my words, okay? I'm not worrying about my paper and my width of my paper. I'm just trying to line that up with what I have stamped. And then I'm going to trim that. Now, because this is now getting a little bit thinner, I'm just going to grab a post-it note here. And this is where I make like a handle to help me to manoeuvre things. So I'm just going to pop that onto there. And that just gives me something here to use and to hold. So now I can, I'm happy with that line and how straight I may have got that. So I can use this now to line up on here so I'm now using the lines or the measurements to line things up and I'm happy with that so I've trimmed that down and I've trimmed that down to it's basically one and a half centimeters in inches you're looking around about that half inch just a bit over so I'm quite happy with that Still got embossing powder everywhere. Okay, so let's have a look at our twine. Now I was looking at one of these two here. Yeah, it's a smoky slate really, that, that twine. So I might, uh, not too bad. Okay. The other thing we could do is actually pop these two together. Tie them together. Okay, let's just have a look. Always worth the play. Now I'm not going to try, I don't think I'm going to tie a bow here. I think all I'm going to do is just tie a knot. And I've only wrapped that around twice. Normally you would probably go three times, but I've already got my baker's twine doubled up in two layers, so I don't really want it going really thick. And I'm just going to cut that off there for the moment and trim that down. Probably around about there in width. Pop that there. underneath and then that I just want to sit just above it okay so I'm going to pop that on in a minute but this one here I'm going to add some um, dimensionals because I want to stabilize this a little bit by adding dimensionals either side of it and that's going to stop that from moving around a lot so I've really got it in the position. Of course, you could piece a, put a piece of sticky tape there if you wanted to. I'm just going to add a couple of more dimensionals on this, like so. As I said, you could use a bit of sticky tape or something to hold that in place. Another thing you could use too is a piece of tear and tape. You don't even need to take the backing off it because um, you don't want that to glue to your, um, your card base. You just want it to hold that all in the right position. Now we're going to bring our card base in. Now I like to do this longest, lining up my longest side rather than my shortest. Usually when I do that, it will fall into place quite well. So she says, let's fingers crossed. Now 
That's not too bad. Quite happy with that. Okay, so I'm just going to pop a couple of dimensionals also onto the back here. Now, I've almost finished this. Don't throw this away because all these outer edges you can actually cut and um, use. And I'm just going to put four there because I don't want that collapsing. This has got to go to England, so I wanted to withstand the post. And I just want to pop that, and it's just 10 centimetres wide, so it's just going from edge to edge now. I just want to maybe line that up a little bit better and take it a little bit closer. That's better. So there's that. Now, you could add a little bit of bling on there if you wanted to, but I don't really want to add anything that's too blingy or shiny now I'm looking for my matte hopefully I can find them oh, let's have another look of course they've fallen right down to the bottom okay so I've got my classic matte dots here, which are in white and black, and also your basic grey. And it looks like I might need to order some more of those as well. Oops. Okay, so let me get my take a pick tool. And I just want to use these basic grey ones. Now, I don't have any big ones left, so I'm just going to use some of these. Okay, so I've just got a few dots there. If I had the bigger size, I may not have, like I've put um, set three sets of two. If I had the bigger size, I might have only just done um, one set of with just one large one. So there you go. There's my finished card. Just a very quick card today. Whoops. Oh, we've lost my picture. So I don't, oh, I'm back again. But any, um, I didn't even realise that I had it on um, two settings there so you could see me as well as my card. <laughs> Usually I just have this one up as the main one. So let me just pop that up as my solo so you can actually see that. So I hope you've enjoyed that as a quick card. As I said, I got my inspiration from my box of tissues. and. Um, you can do that with using any colour because it's a, a very simple sort of card and you can use any colour as your background. But it's basically have a look what's around, around you. I mean, nature has some wonderful colour combinations. Um, and, you know, we have people out there that put magazines together and they're, they're very um, talented in what they do. Have a look at some of their layouts. You can, um, you know, get ideas for scrapbook pages and layouts from magazines and the way a magazine has been laid out. And it looks like I'm having a few internet issues here because my picture has gone a little bit all over the place. So I think it might be about time I say goodbye.
But let me first pop up my um, information in regards to where you can purchase everything from. There you go. So you can see there you can follow me on my blog or on my Facebook page. If you wish to purchase any of these products I used today, you can go to michelledetrissa.stampingup.net and there you will find my shop and links to the catalogues as well. So as I said before, if you do need a catalogue, please email me on michelle at michelledetrissa.com and I can get organised to get one sent out to you as soon as possible. So let me just bring my photo back in. Okay, let me just see where I'm at. There we go. There you are. we are. There's my card again. So I hope you've had a wonderful day. I hope you all had a lovely Christmas, a new year. Um, here in a couple of weeks we'll be, we will be celebrating Australia Day, so that's another good big celebration for us here. Um, but uh, take care and hopefully we'll see you next Friday. And hopefully without any of this um, internet issues that I'm having, it could be we might have a storm coming through because we've had a couple of very warm days here. So take care um, and I will see you next Friday. Bye for now.